Oh my God. Alpha thalassemia. Class number 12. In the last class, we have seen the classification of beta thalassemia. Alpha thalassemia is simply divided into a silent carrier, wherein only one alpha gene is defective. And when it gets increased, it can become an alpha trait. And when it is more severe, three of the alpha genes are missing. It becomes a hemoglobin H. And when all the four are absent, it is hydrops fetalis. All of this can be asked as questions for us. So this is what we people see in it. The, so this is a thalassemia over here. And I find that when all are going to be defective, then it becomes a hydrops fetalis. When two are defective over here, then it becomes a minor and a trait. One on either side is defective, then it becomes a trait again. Whereas if only there is a single defect, the black one, and all the others are normal, it becomes a silent carrier. On the other hand, in hemoglobin H, I find that there are three defects with only one normal. And this can be a Coolis anemia or a hemoglobin H. The most severe of it will be the hydrops vitalis or the hemoglobin parts. So this is again mentioned over here, hemoglobin H. You find the patient can be having moderate anemia. Three of the alpha genes will be missing. And there is a picture less severe than beta thalassemia. Splenomegaly infections can be there. Peripheral smear, almost similar to iron deficiency and the beta thalassemia. Haynes bodies can be seen. The percentage of this H varies. When you do an electrophoresis, you will be able to identify it. In general, what are the features of thalassemia? You find that there can be an expansion of the marrow. I had shown you. There is the immature precursors of the erythrocytes. Normoblast can be seen. Micronormoblast. Cortical bone, crew cut appearance, hepatosplenomegaly, extramedullary hematopoiesis, erythrophagocytosis, ineffective erythropoiesis, hemosiderosis, deposition of iron, ineffective, we have already mentioned. Hemolysis leads to increased reticulocyte count, microcytic hypochromia, Howell Jolly, and target cells basophilic stippling. What more do you people want? So, this is exactly again the pathogenesis. What happens in the case of alpha-1? You find that there will be the inclusion bodies in alpha thalassemia. Is it clear? So there is an excess of the beta chain which gets precipitated. In this case, there will be an excess of alpha chain again that gets precipitated. Both of them will be resulting in similar pathogenesis. Alpha thalassemia it is common in the other countries like Thailand, Middle East, etc., including India. And as I had mentioned, it can be a trait or it can be a minor variant. Hemoglobin H and hemoglobin parts. H I have covered. And in this one, you find that within a few days, the patient or the child will die. You find it is bloated because of the marked edema that is present. And the chorionic villi, you find that there is edema of the villi. Hepatosplenomegaly is present because of extra medullary erythropoiesis, but still it is not adequate and the child is severely jaundiced or still born. It can die within a few hours. Hemoglobin is markedly reduced, basophilic stippling, unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. And for antenatal diagnosis, chorionic villus biopsy is an other method. We shall meet you in class 30. And this is what we call as a golf ball appearance. You find that there is a precipitation within the RBC. And look at this one, this is a golf ball. The RBCs have got this kind of an appearance. So this again can be an MCQ for us. So 12 classes completed in the counter. Thank you.